Good morning, and thank you all for, for joining us here today. Um, this is a terrific occasion in so many ways. Um, it's, a, it's an opportunity to bring you up to date on PCI's work globally, but also on our, our growing impact in the border region. Um, we're one of the go-to agencies, one of the lead agencies in Liberia for the efforts to stop the prevent, uh, prevent the spread of the disease. Uh, we're working with uh, the Liberian government. We're working with USAID's Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. And we're so pleased to see the trend down. It's, it's far, from, far from finished, but certainly the number of active cases in Liberia have been dramatically rolled back. The new funding we've just got is actually not related to directly addressing Ebola. It's about addressing some of the impacts of Ebola on food security. Because families have lost family mem members to Ebola, markets have been closed, um, people aren't able to harvest their food um, as, uh, um, as effectively as they have done before. In a country that had food security issues before, food security impacts are getting worse and worse. So we've just got an award for, um, I think it's about $8.3 million for the next 18 months, 20 months, to address food security, not in the counties where we presently are, but in a new area where there's very few agencies working. So this is very exciting. We'll be starting the work hopefully in the next two or three weeks, just in time for the planting season for the next, next round of crops. So we're very excited. Just comment on a couple of other um, very high profile uh, recent assignments that PCI has taken on. One example is our strengthening of food security in Malawi on a very large scale now, working with mothers to improve the health and economic opportunities of their families. In Guatemala, we're matching local farmers with schools to provide fresh fruit and vegetables for school food programs and feeding tens of thousands, tens of thousands of children every day, in, recently in Guatemala with several of our staff here, and, and walking into these schools with the hundreds and hundreds of kids in several different sites and seeing the difference these programs are making is just extraordinary. We're very pleased to have been invited by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, to take our current program with them to scale in India, mobilizing communities to improve maternal and child health. One of the most exciting programs we're operating right now, for me at least, is in Ethiopia, where through cell technology we're providing uh, information on grazing and water availability for pastoralists. To, to feed and graze their crops. And uh, it's just, it's just, it, it's taking technology into the operations of our programs and it's been funded by Google, a, a great new partner for PCI. Very excited. And then, and then you all know about our Women's Empowerment Initiative, WE, and we're in the process of expanding this across all of PCI's programs this year uh, as a result of a very generous contribution by the, uh, the uh, Lucille and Ron Neely Foundation. Um, late last year, Sarah Emerson, where are you, Sarah? In blue, there you are. Uh, and I had the opportunity to visit with our uh, women empowered groups in, in Guatemala, and it was so exciting to see how these women have taken control of their own lives, taken control of their own lives, creating small businesses, and investing in the health and education of their children. This is such a powerful program. It integrates all of our work with women as the centerpiece across all the sectors we operate in. PCI was founded by a young doctor, uh, Dr. Jim Turpin, uh, from Coronado, whose volunteer work in a children's clinic in Tijuana became his life's work. And from Dr. Turpin's early efforts then to save the lives of two children who were suffering, dying of pneumonia, for more than 50 years now, we focused on improving the health and well-being of children and families on the U.S.-Mexican border in some of the poorest communities with the highest levels of poverty and the poorest birth outcomes in the country. And we've had some exciting news, and part of the reason for being here is sharing this with you. Uh, we've been rec we're recognized as a leader in maternal and child health and have recently won a $9.5 million award from the Department of Health and Human Services for expansion of our Healthy Start program to improve prenatal care, labor, and delivery for low-income Latinas and their families, and importantly, to mentor other organizations with border Healthy Start programs across California, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. So this is a great outreach and a dramatic expansion of our work and our impact. 
and I'd like to invite Dr. Maria Reyes to join me up here and tell you a little bit more about our work along the border. So I'm here to share with you our wonderful U.S. and border programs. We've done so many things for so many people, but George shared with you this wonderful opportunity now for us to grow and show our leadership and make more impact in the Latina women of reproductive age. So we have the wonderful Healthy Start program. So in our Healthy Start program, we don't just do the non-medical home visitation. We provide them with many other programs, supplementing to what? To raise their level of education, to raise them from their poverty, to then make changes in their lives that's gonna impact their whole family. So we piloted the Women's Empowered Program at Savings Groups in the US in this past year. And we had savings groups with the East African community, with the Somalis and the Amharics, and with the Latinos and the Filipino community. The outcomes that we have achieved, empowering these women who never have been able to save, who are now saving and having their own businesses, is just truly wonderful. And so at the Ventanilla de Salud, we are now expanding those programs to be a second generation Ventanilla, where we're part of nine in the country that will be doing the second generation Ventanilla, doing more clinical intake so that we can then look at making referrals and following them up so that we just don't report outputs numbers to you but we are outcomes based PCI this is at the root of our mission is to have sustainable communities and behavior change in that individual although we are family centered so our Ventania the Salud having been a model is now in 50 in each and every one of the Mexican consulates in the United States. Well, on, on behalf of the Consulate General of Mexico, we want to really thank for these 10 years to Ventanilla de Salud and Project Concern International. Um, this time, we are providing you the 54,700 for Ventanilla de Salud plus the 7,000 for the uh, second phase of the Ventanilla de Salud generation. So thank, thank you, you very much. In these 10 years, uh, we've provided almost half a million dollars. And also, uh, uh, thanks to your help, we've reached more than 200,000 people. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From time to time, I'm asked, well, PCI seems to be doing so many different things. And, and, and my view on that, and I know our staff's view on that, is, is health, of course, is a very complex <coughs> matter. It's not just about immunizations and treatment. It's not just about clean water. It's not just about food and nutrition. It's not just about health, it's about health and poverty because poor health and poverty are so closely linked. So wherever we can, and again, this women's initiative is, is a great example of this, we integrate all of these elements into all our programs around the world. That is ultimately how we can create change and, and really transformational change from our experience. And, and uh, underlying all of this is our belief in the power of people to change their own lives. And we know if we give them the tools and the training and the resources they need, they can lift themselves out of poverty and create a healthier future for their families.